Hey, how's it going, people? This is Jonas back here on Learn Grandma 2, and today we're actually going to take a look at trick number six and seven. So, trick number six is about the CLI mode. We'll get into that in a second, and then trick number seven is about how you can actually get a list of macro shortcuts. Uh, so you can type them faster. It's still interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll show you. Now, I hope that you enjoyed the first five episodes of this thing. Uh, again, I shot those episodes last year, and uh, there's a link in the video description. So, tricks number one through five, they were already available, and I hope you enjoyed watching through those. All right, so today we're gonna take a look, first of all, at the CLI mode. Now, CLI mode is something I wanna talk about because it can actually be sort of, um, I wanna say tricky. So let's just go ahead and create a macro here. Uh, I don't know, CLI mode as the label. And then I'm actually gonna name this message. Get me out of here. Oh, you can see I can type while I talk. That's about the only cool trick you can do as a software developer. <laughs> All right, so that was number one, yeah. Uh, let's just leave it at that. All right, so if this is a regular macro, we can just click on it, perfect. Now, one thing, if you happen to actually click on this thing down here, and then you click on it, it works uh, just like before. But now, usually what you can do in Granimate on PC is right-click on something to edit it, right? So now if you right-click on it, whoopsie, nothing happens. All right, no problem, let's just go to edit and then click on the thing, whoops, <laughs> still it doesn't work. And that's why I wanna talk about it. So the CLI mode is really sort of a tricky thing. Once you kind of activate that button and you wanna go back in there, it doesn't work. Um, and it's even crazy enough that you can't move it. Go please, nope. And now here comes the coolest trick, go delete, nope. <laughs> So you really backed yourself into a corner here, which is pretty funny, I think. So what to do? What you have to do, really, and this is a little crazy, but this is how you get back into that thing. You go edit, and then macro, in this case, macro number eight. Go please, and now here we go. We can turn this thing back on, and now we can use it as regularly scheduled. So. This is something I wanted to talk about because it might be that, I don't know, you might just play around with it. Truth to be told, I don't really get that mode. Um, we'll see in two episodes how that might be useful, but pff, yeah, I don't really know. All I know from this button is that uh, I can't really explain to you the clear purpose from my point of view. And once you have that clicked and you close this editor, then man, it's really tough to get back into that thing. So. That's why I wanted to show you that, just so you can keep an eye out. There's the CLI mode, you can read it up or read up on it in the manual. Um, yeah, it pretty much has a little bit to do. Hold on, let me go into the manual and figure this thing out. I wanna be able to explain it to you at least. All right, so I'm back and the CLI mode, um, let me just explain it to you and I still can't really give you a good example of why that might be useful. Uh, we'll actually see in the next video how you can use um, the CLI mode toggle to build your own hard key, so to speak. I mean, you won't be able to place it on a physical key, but close to it. So um, if you go in here and you actually deactivate this, then that means that this macro won't, will not interact with the command line um, interface anymore. So um, if I turn this on, then you can see that it's, it's kind of hard to tell actually. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if you kind of click on this and the CLI is activated, then it will actually interfere with um, your command line. So now when we go, um, I don't know, fixture, 
one at 100 um and now we have the command line interaction if we go like that then um yeah you can see here that it actually submitted what you just entered and then ran your macro so if that's not what you want then go cli um deactivate the cli mode you can see a red c up there and now if i go fixture one and I click on this thing then you can see over here that what you had entered in the command line um, in the command line interface uh, wasn't affected by the macro. So that's really the purpose of it. And again, we'll see a practical use case for that. But apart from that very use case, I can't really tell how that would ever be useful. So yeah, this is one of these features where if you have this little toggle deactivated and you don't know about it, then it's really hard to get into that macro and do anything with it. And that just sucks. So you get a lot of bad user experience at the cost of, of something, a benefit that, that I'm not even sure really exists. <laughs> so welcome to the beautiful user experience with Grandma 2. Something I've always been very excited about. Man, you know, I love this console for being able to learn it for free, but some things just trip me up, really. All right, before I let you go, um, Another macro trick that, that I want to show you is uh, finding out about macro shortcuts. Now, this is really cool if you end up building macros a lot. Let me let me show you how this goes. So you go command help. Well, first of all, this is also interesting. If you want to enter something here, and um, you know you have the shortcut menu on, how do I how do I go about entering a command now? Well, either really obvious solution, you just deactivate this, or you just go. Um, into command mode it doesn't really matter either way <laughs> you have to like toggle it anyways so just go command help and here you can see a list of all sorts of um, macro commands and this green part over here is actually the shortcut all right this is still a pretty big list so how do we manage that um, if you go command help and then you enter something. Let's say I want to find out what the shortcut for fixture is. I just go fixed and then a star. And then you can see over here, fixture. Um, so FI is the shortcut for fixture. Now, how is that useful? Let's find out what the shortcuts are for through and at, and then I can show you. So command help T with a star. And then we can see, then we can see, <laughs> then we can see that through um, over here is just the T, perfect. And then at, I mean, it's kind of stupid to use a shortcut for that. Pretty sure it doesn't exist. Command help at, um, yeah, there we can see there's no shortcut for two letter word or two letter command. All right, let's go into, um, into the edit mode and I'm just gonna call this shortcut. So the cool thing about these shortcuts, if you kind of remember them, is you can just go fix, one t 100 and then at obviously uh let's say 10 t 90. now watch what happens when i enter this this is really cool once i enter this uh you can see that um it actually gets replaced with the real keywords so all the keywords that uh ma2 actually recognizes they will actually be highlighted in green so for macros, you have something that you don't have for plugins and that's syntax highlighting. And that's awesome. So you can see over here that um, it actually picked up wrong in our shortcut. So let's go back and find out what the real shortcut for fixture is. Command help F star, or we could also just go command help fix star, whoops. All right. Oh, so it's F I, got it. So let's go back in here. And now we can see it says fixture. So that's a really cool thing. Um, just like with the keyboard shortcuts that I love to use, that um, you know, if you kind of work with it and then you go like, all right, I want to do fixture one through 100 at, I don't know, 20. Then you can just look it up and be like, all right, what's fixture? I don't know, uh, over here. No, that's not the right one, fixture F. All right, so kind of how you look it up while you go along and then you try to remember it and that's how you pick it up. It's the same thing with the shortcuts. So you can just go, all right, let's see, whoops. 
let's see command help um i want to manipulate macro so let's just go m and then you can see over here m equals macro cool so whatever you have planned whatever macros you you built um uh, maybe just just kind of observe yourself if you find yourself repeating commands over and over and over and over again especially longer ones like fixture or preset type of oh, preset type is a good one all right command help preset star let's see preset type pt perfect so if you kind of find yourself repeating these really long um these really long commands all you want to do is use the command help and then um if you enter them in the macro itself it actually gets replaced and then um this should be a lot faster when it comes to building macros all right and that's tricks number six and seven for you uh so next week we're actually gonna uh see number eight and nine and then the week after at the end of this lovely little macro month tricks number 10 and 11 i just figured out what 10 and 11 are going to be so uh now i'm actually gonna go and update the schedule and um by the time that you saw this episode uh that was actually a week ago yeah so this is how a modern youtube production works all right i'm, I'm gonna stop babbling now anyways go and check out the schedule for all the other market tricks coming up make sure that you also number two uh check out the five videos that i produced last year i'm gonna link them below uh so you can check out all these other market tricks and then um check back next week if you have any questions join our facebook group and subscribe that's always cool all right have fun Enjoy building small little macros, and if you have something really cool figured out, share it in the group. So, my name is Donis. Thanks for watching.